Darwin's hamster, in his latest video, asked an intriguing question. Is it fair to dismiss ideas out of hand without any further thought? Um, and then he brought up the fact that the in the Renaissance, he didn't say it exactly this way, but this is what he was alluding to. In the Renaissance, the Catholic Church dismissed the idea of the fledgling natural sciences because these ideas conflicted with their religious views. Who, he asks, do we investigate further? I had a problem with some of his contentions, namely that using the scientific method might not be effective in some circumstances because the knowledge gained through its use takes time to accumulate. I mean, I might have misunderstood him, but I don't think so. Finally, he brought up the point that he, if Carl Sagan, he said, said that he saw little green men in his backyard, would that affect your opinion? Or if someone you knew said so? In the comments section, I talked a little about why anecdotal evidence is not considered scientific evidence unless it's corroborated with other evidence and support. And in his video, um, he asked another interesting question and conclusion. What does it take? What are the criteria? Um, and so I thought I would take a few minutes to try to go through some of my ideas on this. This is very free form. Are there aliens out there? I think that's maybe what he was really asking. If not, he'll correct me. And if they are out there, could they reach us? And if they reach us, how will we know that they're here? Michio Kaku has said some things um, I think are relevant here. Uh, he's a popular scientist, and there'll be links to some of the videos in the sidebar. He said, we will inevitably make contact with alien life in outer space. Get used to it. In our own backyard, there are a hundred billion stars in our Milky Way. And there are a hundred billion galaxies, which can be seen by the Hubble telescope. Now multiply 100 billion by 100 billion. I mean, the number is so vast, no one, no human being can get his mind around it. So to assume that we are the only game in town, give me a break. But if life is so prevalent, why haven't we found it? This is a question that Paul Davies takes just as seriously as Michio Kaku. And in fielding a similar question at a recent extraordinary conference that was sponsored by the Royal Society on the subject in January of 2010, he touched on the fact that he has been interested in this kind of scientific research that is the possibility of first contact for a very long time. He talked about his acquaintance with J. Allen Hynek and he went on to point out that the reason he doesn't take these stories of aliens seriously is simply because the aliens in these reports are so uh, human-like. It just seems, as he phrased it, anthropomorphism with a vengeance. He went on to say that if there were aliens out there, they would be truly alien. And the level of technology in these reports, these popular reports in the press and elsewhere, um, the technology in those is so close to our own that it just makes the stories not credible. Kaku made a similar point about the likelihood that an alien species, if we ever found it, would be truly alien. So alien indeed that we might not find enough in common with them to have, for them to have any interest in us. Both Kaku and Davis brought up the time scale involved and Davis pointed out that it was very unrealistic to expect alien technology to be just a few decades ahead of our own. But Davies is a dedicated researcher and he concluded his response to the question by saying, of course, if I'm wrong, we'll soon know it, won't we? The truth will out. Davies position, Davis' position seems like the only position we can take. 
Almost since the beginning of human culture, human beings have been curious about the possibility of life in other worlds. This is not a hyperbole. Some of the earliest guesses that other worlds might exist that are like the Earth and that other races might exist began with the ancient Greeks. The supposition makes sense. Why could not whatever operates to create our intelligent species operate to create other intelligent species elsewhere? If we do make contact with life elsewhere, and if we continue as a viable species beyond that contact, we can begin to answer some of the questions that have seemed impossible to consider in the past. How much of what human beings do and build is based on logic and necessity, and how much on the eccentricities inherent in our own nature as a peculiar species. In other words, what is essential and what is accidental about us? So far, human beings have been bound to Earth with uh, very few hops off the planet's surface. But the universe is vast, and we're discovering more and more extra planetary extrasolar planets all the time. So far, human beings have physically stepped only onto the moon, a barren Earth satellite, which was recently to discover, discovered to have water on its surface, but almost certainly is not a place which harbors life. Can we ever understand ourselves when we are the only language-speaking, technology-using, culture-building species we have to study. Is it perhaps like trying to grasp linguistics with only one known language? We can imagine making the effort, but with only one example, it is very difficult to form valid hypotheses and come to valid conclusions. So for the time being at least, we're doomed to contemplate ourselves as a lonely species. But we can echo Paul Davies' words, we'll soon know, won't we? The truth will out.